specialized um, imaging modality that you can go into um, after you um, graduate. So if you want to do a rotation through here, you, you're certainly welcome to. <laughs> Um, this, I've had this done twice. Has anyone had a bone dystentometry um, done on them? Basically, well, you're not old enough, that's why. Um, basically, this is done just to evaluate um, the bone density in a person. So mainly, the overall reason for this is done for osteoporosis. So this is really um, has developed um, throughout my career to where we have DEXA now, uh, where we did not have this. We would take regular x-rays of the um, spine and hip area, and the radiologist would determine if the bone looked osteoporotic or not. You know, so it was very subjective as to the radiologist looking at it. Now, radiologists can look at a spine, and they can see degenerative changes and that sort of thing, but now we've evolved into um, a, bone dysatometry where we can get specific numbers and scores <coughs> to determine it. We've taken the subject, subjectivity out of it um, to where it's more precise now. So let's learn a little bit about this. Um, so again, this is the uh, modality. So this is a separate room. This is not done with a normal x-ray machine. Okay, we do use radiation for this, but it's going to be usually, and you may not even, you, I don't know, do you have it in your hospitals? I know Kaisers have it in their hospitals. Anybody else know or not? not uh, sure. A lot of times these are found in women's imaging centers because we do our mammograms and we get our DEXA study. Um, so a lot of these are maybe in the imaging centers as opposed to the hospital. Um, but again, we're looking for um, osteoporosis. What is the big deal about osteoporosis? This is another big industry along with um, um, mammography and breast imaging. You know, I told you a couple, or last week, it's, it's quite the industry. Well, so is this. With osteoporosis, maybe you've seen commercials with Sally Fields or whoever. She's the one that just comes to my mind about, you know, uh, bone loss and taking pills. Now you can take pills to help with um, bone loss. So. Um, this has been quite the industry. Um, and as I said, uh, a little bit of history. You have to lose almost 50% of, of the bone before it can be determined that you have osteoporosis. And that is not what, that is way too far gone that it, it's hard to come back from that. So we want to detect um, osteoporosis um, prior to it becoming to this point. And, and again, osteoporosis, this is not a female issue. It is a female and male issue. It tends to be more prevalent in females. However, as we get older, we're all gonna go through this. It just depends on how much. So what's, what is going to be the fear of having osteoporosis? What does that mean? The bones become what? Brittle. Brittle and weak. And then what happens? They break. The breaks. And so you know all, all Older people, and I almost said us, I'm not quite there yet, I'm getting there. Uh, older people tend to worry about what, falling, right, and breaking something. Any, you know, uh, any of you, I'll just say you, could probably, you know, fall right down onto the ground right now and not break anything, but an older person, that could be catastrophic. Yes? Um, this thing breaking, it can get hard as when it's only old people. Showers are dangerous. They slip so in the many. showers, you're right. And it's like, you. You're absolutely right. Thanks for bringing that up. Do you, have you been doing any hip? Have you done some hip x-rays, fractures on older people? That's very common. Um, and so, yeah, the, the bathroom. And that's why they have the bars and on, on everything to help stabilize. So thanks for the reminder. That's right. <laughs> Be careful of the shower. Um, <laughs> And it says um, osteoporosis is not detectable until later portions of the disease, again, which is why DEX is important. And sometimes the first time that we find osteoporosis on a person is with that, with that first break. It's too late at that point to, to do anything about the osteoporosis. Um, you've seen the thoracic hump, the, the um, hunchback thing, that's kyphosis. Mm -hmm. um, that's degeneration of the um, thoracic spine. And so, 
bone densitometry, this is our be best method for um, looking at um, bone mineralization. So I don't know how that got there, but um, okay, so uh, spongy bone, compact bone, looking at this, we have, um, oh here, this is what I'm going to show you, healthy bone and then osteoporosis. So you can see how um, we're losing bone mineralization here. So that uh, spongy bone becomes less spongy. We'll watch that. So bone composition, osteoblast build, and osteoclast break down and reabsorb. And an osteocyte is just a mature bone cell. So your book talks about BMC versus BMD. And typically what we're doing with um, DEXA or um, bone densitometry, we're looking at more at the BMD, um, ratio of the bone mineral content per area of the bone. Okay, it's more of a ratio. And so, A couple of things that can be done. We talked about these um, first three, um, and your book also talks about this, and this is in your Bontrager book again, so this reading assignment is there, um, to assist wrist fractures. So there are certain indications of a person being inclined to have more of a fracture than other people, and we'll look at those in a minute. So a lot of times I'll do a, a BMD, along with risk um, factors for a fracture, risk of fractures, to determine the likelihood of someone um, uh, possibly having a fracture. Um, sometimes the bone densitometry is done to see how a person is responding to their, um, whatever medication they're taking for osteoporosis. So if a person's been diagnosed with osteoporosis and they're given some medication to make it better, then um, they will have follow-ups um, with the bone densitometry. So not only to look for risk <coughs> fracture, um, fractures of um, risks of fractures or for osteoporosis, but also to see how well they're responding to any therapy and to perform, look at um, the vertebral bodies and look for possible um, fractures for that. So again, look at the indications, um, why um, bone densitometry is done. Um, as I said before, females, any gender can get osteoporosis, but it typically tends to be female, um, females of advanced age, um, a family history, ethnicity can come into play, body habitus, lifestyle. Um, they're talking about um, smoking, alcohol consumption, um, whether taking hormones or not. Uh, so estrogen deficiency is the most common indicator for osteoporosis. Uh, nutrition, not moving around. Frequent falls can increase the chance of having a fracture alcohol, tobacco, hyperparathyroidism. So here are some diseases, hyperparathyroidism, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, some GI conditions and medications can also cause this. So quite a few indicators um, for, uh, um, for having osteoporosis. Um, let me, I'm gonna skip over that. Okay, T scores and Z scores, I want you to know about this. Um, so these are scores that determine whether, you know, the um, likelihood of somebody having osteoporosis or they're kind of rating them. So the T-score is the number um, of standard deviations um, of a, from, from the mean BMD of a young, normal population of the same sex and ethnic background. So T-scores, if I... If I um, had a bone densitometry exam, um, T scores compare me to a female, you know, uh, Caucasian, um, somebody young. 
and I'm gonna lose, right? So I call it the T-scores are terrible scores. I do not want a T-score. I don't, I don't wanna know that. <laughs> I wanna know my Z-score, and this is comparing me to someone of my own gender and age, right? <laughs> so that, that one I'm gonna win. I'm a milk drinker for sure. So anyway, so Z scores, <laughs> Z scores and T scores. So know which one is which. Okay, if I were to describe it to you, you would know. But they give you both um, when you get your uh, readout, when you get your report, um, they'll, give, they'll give you both. Okay. You don't have to know the standard deviations. You don't have to memorize these numbers in your book that has a chart of what a normal T score is or Z score, and you don't have to worry about that. Okay, just generally know what they are. T is terrible. Okay, <laughs> osteoporosis um, management. So we do have drugs or certain different kinds of drugs. There are some drugs that inhibit bone reabsorption. So, um, so the body reabsorbs the bone, so meaning it takes away. So if we have medication to stop the body from doing that, then the bone won't be reabsorbed. So these are some of those that do that. And there is one that stimulates bone formation. So um, not as many of those, of course, but um, there's that. So there are some medications depending on which way the doctor wants to go with it. And then why would we not do bone densitometry on somebody? Um, okay, QC procedures, we'll talk more about this, but if, you, if you're not keep up, keeping up with QC procedures on your equipment, and this goes for any um, radiology equipment. If it's not up to date and accurate, then you're not going to get um, accurate results on your densitometry exam. So um, if the QC is not up to date, bone mass is too low or the body part is too thick. So this is going to skew the results. Okay, so um, if you're very extremely osteoporotic, you may not get a good reading. And um, if the patient is hyperspinic, then it would be a problem. Um, if there's any malformations, so again, when we do um, bone densitometry exams, we do the hip and the spine. And so if they have any malformation of the spine, if it's a little um, scoliosis, kyphosis, anything like that, it may skew the results on that. Um, doing a hip, if the patient has a metal hip prosthetic device, um, then that certainly is not <laughs> going to be an appropriate reading. Place to make sense. Um, if this, this is um, some new procedures that we're doing um, for the spine and um, where they're putting uh, bone grafts in. So if that's the case, then you're not going to get an accurate reading of the person's osteoporosis. Um, reading a bone graph is not um, going to to be conducive to the patient. And then certainly even Betty who's pregnant, we would not do this on. This is not an emergency procedure. So the female patient who may be osteoporotic or hormone deficiency or whatever, um, would have the baby first and then have the bone skin later. So usually this is not an issue. So what is the prep for osteo, uh, I'm sorry, for bone dysatometry is loose clothing or gown. And then, of course, no metal around the areas that we're going to be imaging. So the equipment is, um, there are different equipment, pieces of equipment that your book talks about, but I think all the ones that um, we have with our hospital and the more common ones, that's what we call it, DEXA, um, dual energy. So you have a high, beam, a high energy and a low energy beam that um, <coughs> alternates to see the difference and density of the bone from the low energy to the high energy, and that's how they get their readings. Um, so I've seen it DXA or DEXA, dual energy X-ray absorption, you know, absorption. <laughs> And so this is uh, a printout of what a patient, um, our report, the patient may not receive it, but what our report looks like. So they're going to do um, L1 through 4 or 5, and then they have the nice little um, color graphic and then a regular chart. And then down here, they'll tell you what the scores are for each area. 
So the machine shoots like high KV, low KV, high KV, low KV? Yes. Uh -huh. And so comparing um, those different energy readings mm -hmm. to determine what the um, BMD would be. Yeah, that's why they call it dual energy, high and low. And but so... Does the um, mass stay the same though as it's shooting or...? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. And so here, this whoever this person is, it looks like they're in, in this area. So it's a nice little color graphic. You know, this is a little bit harder to read. Um, but, looking, you know, when I looked at mine, the first thing I looked at was making sure that was up here somewhere. You know, that's like the first thing I'm looking at. And then of the, of the hip area. So my point is, what are you going to be doing every day when you are the DEXA tech? The spine and the yeah. hips. <laughs> The spine and a hip. Spine and hip. Hip and spine. Um, some other options. Uh, yes, and like I said, I've had some, and I'm going to show you the video, but you, you know, you um, put on a gown or not, depending on what you have on. You know, they tell you to, you know, wear loose clothing. So depending on what you have, they may not change you. They can put you in a gown, you lay on a table. You, they have this huge sponge. Um, again, I'll show you a picture, but you'll, you would love it for your spine x-rays. We usually don't have this one in our radiology department. This huge sponge like this. So the patient lays on their table and their legs are up on this sponge. So why do you think the legs would need to be, I mean, the femur is flexed 90 degrees to the body. What do you think the purpose of that is? Yeah, to get that spine flat onto the table so that it's horizontal to the image receptor. So absolutely. So um, patient just it lays there at that point for the spine, and then when it comes time to do the hip, they take that out. Some options here: um, QCT and Q uh, quantitative CT, quantitative ultrasound. Um, we can use CT to measure trabecular and cortical bone. And it can also, anytime we have three um, CT, we can do 3D imaging with that. Um, or we can also do ultrasound. And this is using the heel. I've never done, um, our ultrasound techs in our department typically do not do this um, quantitative ultrasound. It would be done probably in the DEXA department, I would think. Uh, again, a specialized piece of imaging equipment for the heel, and I'll show you a picture, and then um, this can be used for people who are excessively overweight. They can't get on the table. Remember, our tables have limits. Um, the scan is not accurate for hypersemic patients, so this is an option. Doesn't mean we can't do a densitometry exam. Um, on a heavy set patient or a hypersensitive patient. It's just we may have to do something different. So here are a couple of options for that, depending. So see, the, here's one for ultrasound. She's putting her foot in this. I think I foot massage. Uh -huh, no, right. <laughs> and so then you get, you know, you get your readings from that. So I don't know why the heel, especially as opposed to, maybe it's because it's the thicker of the, you know, lower of the tarsal bones. You know, I'm thinking, you know, why not the fifth metatarsal or why not the talus or whatever. Maybe it's just because it's a thicker, uh, largest um, bone of that part of the, you know, lower extremity of the foot area. And it would, this person would not be the one. They, need, they should have had this really hypersthenic patient there, but they didn't. Um, so here's that sponge I was telling you about. So again, the femur is flexed 90 degrees to the body, and um, then for the AP hip, the legs are extended. Um, basically, it's a low dose. Um, it says it's less than a chest x-ray exam. The um, radiation that you get for this basically is, the, is a little bit the same as or a little bit less than a chest x-ray. So it's, it's pretty low dose. If you do the QCT, as always with CT, you're going to get more um, exposure. 
Um, it's a protocol for re-exams every 18 months. So we, um, if for instance a female has done, or uh, anybody, I, I apologize, anybody, any patient, um, has uh, had this exam and they feel like they need to take medication, the doctor says you need to take medication, they'll have them come back in about 18 months. You've got to give time for that medication to take effect in order to see a change. So 18 months <coughs> is about the, the time for a follow-up. <clears throat> this is talking about... Uh, oh, uh, Basically, this uh, for QCT is the um, spine. Spine, hip. Um, forearm, forearm, this is an option. The forearm is scanned when the spine or hip scans are not obtainable. Why would we not be able to do a spine or hip if they're uh, wheelchair confined, they're um, too large to be placed on the table or to get an accurate exam, or they're not able to lay down, so they can um, do the forearm as an option. Not the best option, but it is compared to the spine and the hip, because that's where most fractures take place for osteoporosis, but um, a forearm can be used. So please note that, that that is an option for somebody who is not able to get onto the table for whatever reason. So they can just lay their forearm across. Um, we talked about body habitus a little bit. Um, there are two things about the um, bone, densit um, bone densitometry equipment. It has to. We do QC on that for um, precision and accuracy. So precision is known as another name for reproducibility. We did that. In, we did that experiment last semester for the x-ray machine. If you use 70 kV at five mass, then you expect the same amount of um, exposure for each time you shoot that, right? Reproducibility. We expect the same um, x-ray beam intensity coming out each time you use those fac same factors, and that's what this is. Reproducibility is a measurement to get the same value when um, we're doing the same patient, okay? You can imagine having the same patient and not having reproducibility or precision on your machine. It, there's no point in doing it. And then accuracy is how um, the measured value reflects the true or actual value of the bone density. So we want accuracy. So, and remember that slide that said, um, you know, uh, what are some contraindications for performing bone densitometry? Well, not having your QC in place and not making sure that this is done on a periodic basis is certainly a reason not to go. So be careful, you know, about where you're going to have your exam done. You want some place that is reputable. Okay, so this is a new method using software to diagnose the potential uh, for vertebral fractures. And um, so we're looking at the um, T and L spine in a lateral projection. So it's looking at the height of the vertebral bodies um, for each one and making sure that they're consistent. So measures vertebral height and compares them. So this is also something um, that is looked at. So I have apparently some questions. <coughs> Let's see if we can answer these for a review. Can you read it? Okay, so which what answer? A. A. And these should, have you, did you look at your slides? Are these on your slides that I gave you? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you might want to write down your answers. So I don't think I had the answers on there. 
So I had the students, um, if this was last year or the year before, I can't remember, I think the students put these slides together. So we went down to the um, computer lab and so they made some questions up. Isn't that nice of them? Mm -hmm. So what is accuracy? B. B. And then what position is used during vertebral fracture assessment? That was the last one. And what position is the patient in? So this is different than what a bone densitometry would be. It's the lateral. It's B, the lateral. Right, what's a common type of, um, oh, you haven't studied spine yet, have you? Well, okay, we started it. Yeah, pardon me? We started it. Okay. A common type of fracture in spine, especially with older people, compression. Um, is compression fractures of the spine. So do you, do you know what a compression fracture is? Mm -hmm. or, and you know what the vertebral body looks like? It's wedged. Yes, okay, so you know. Okay. I, don't, I won't drop. <laughs> yeah, the vertebral body is wedge-shaped. So um, this, is what, this is why they do it in the lateral, so that they can see you know, the, the chances of that actually happening. Okay, which, um, okay, what cells build and replace bone tissue? Osteoblasts. What is the difference between bone mineral content and bone mineral, oh, skip that <coughs> one. But um, <coughs> bone mineral content is just the content of the bone, I love the name, it's just what it sounds like. BMD compares that value to an area, so it's a little bit more precise. You know, so much bone per area is what a BMD does, okay? Bone mineral content per area is what a BMD does. So a little bit more. So that's why if you, when you read, you'll see BMD more than you see BMC. A pregnant patient can get a bone densitometry exam. That will not be on your test. <laughs> What's the answer? False. Only because it's too easy. What is the mode of action of estrogen for osteoporosis? Estrogen, if you remember, <laughs> well, there are two types, uh, bone reabsorption and uh, a bone reabsorption inhibitor and one that promotes Produce. bone growth. And estrogen is the bone reabsorption inhibitor. It inhibits bone reabsorption. Oh, well, hello. Okay, so A or B? Okay, A. <laughs> what is the mode for parathyroid hormone for osteoporosis? And that's the bone formation. That's the only one. The um, parathy parathyroid hormone is the only one for bone formation. So what is dual energy x-ray absorptionometry? Absorptionometry. B. Oh, 11, what is QCT? And that um, sound waves know. A, right? So it's A. Take slices of the cubicle. And then number 12. Number 12. A, B, or C? C. C. Easy to hold this down. Overweight and not unable to be scanned. So the L. <laughs> Which is not a clinical risk factor. <laughs> Very good. See, foot size. Individuals with multiple risk factors have a higher risk for fractures. I'm going to go true. true. Absolutely. What is a normal T score? I told you you don't have to memorize those. Um, and I forget what it is. I think it's less, it's greater than a negative one. We'll have to look that up. Put a question mark by 15. Instance <clears throat> when a forearm would be used? Obesity or all, yeah, all of the above. Mm -hmm. All of the above. <laughs> D. Was it this class that had the Elora? Was that? Was that <clears throat> you guys that were in front of that sign? Oh, yeah. Um, so was it a hotel? 
There was, there was a neighborhood. Yeah. Oh, it was a neighborhood that yeah. was called Galara? Mm -hmm. I thought that was such a cute picture. You're going to put that in your um, graduation <laughs> thing, right? It was so cute. Every time I see Alara now, I think of that picture. Alara Estates. Yeah, Alara Estates. Um, <laughs> so Alara, of course. And then recognizing body habit is, habitus is important. True or false? True. Of course it's true because that determines whether you're going to put the patient on the table or not. Okay, now I want to go back to, I have a little video. It won't hurt your feelings if we're done a little early, will it? Not at all. 